Well, welcome to another video in my video series dealing with instrument approach procedures and instrument approach charts. In this video, I want to talk about a point that I find students have trouble understanding. When I point out this symbol on the chart, I generally get rather vague or confused answer, and it's clear to me that the student really doesn't understand the meaning of this symbol. So we'll see on the chart here, this is in the vertical profile of the chart, this symbol it looks like a big heavy V. It's called the visual descent point. So most people know what that is by name. Most people, however, don't have a very clear understanding of exactly what it's doing there and, and how does it affect you as a normal pilot. So that's what this video is all about, to try to clear up some of those. While we're looking at this profile view here, I'd like to point out a couple of things that we'll reference later on. And the first is the distance to the missed approach point. So you can see here it's 1.6 nautical miles, and then the height above touchdown, which in this case is 544 feet. So our goal in determining the visual descent point is to know when we can start a descent, or when we must start a descent, in order to maintain a 3-degree glide angle to the runway. It also should be pointed out that the VDP does not apply to precision approach, and it does not apply to circling approaches. So looking at the schematic here, we see a similar depiction. This is the way we normally fly this procedure. We will fly to the final approach fix. We'll start a 700 to 1,000 foot per minute rate of descent down to the minimum descent altitude. We'll hold that altitude level until we reach the missed approach point, which for a straight-in non-precision approach is at the end of the runway. Now imagine if you flew all the way to the end of the runway at MDA, would you have any hope of landing on anything but a very, very long runway? And the answer is, of course not. The idea is that normally you'll break out, you'll have enough visibility in order to be able to see the runway at some point prior to the missed approach point, and you'll be able to commence a descent from MDA in order to make a safe landing. What we're trying to identify with the visual approach point is where will I leave the MDA in order to be able to have a stabilized glide angle of three degrees. So again, the goal here is to identify a point on the approach where we intercept the three degree glide angle, and also identify a, a point on the approach where if we were to fly beyond that point, that is inside the VDP, the glide angle for our descent to the runway would be steeper and steeper and steeper as we move closer and closer to the runway. Well, another way to look at this is to take a look at an approach chart that does not have a depicted VDP. Now, VDPs exist on all non-precision straight-in approaches. They're not always depicted, and I suspect that over time, the FAA will add these depictions to approach plates. Well, at this point, I realized I needed to add uh, an addition to the video, and that has to do with non-published VDPs. The FAA documents state that when the VDP is published, the vertical descent profile has been surveyed and is clear of obstacles, and so you can make a safe descent to the runway. That may be one of the reasons why VDPs are not published at all points. It doesn't mean that you don't have an obstacle clearance. It just means that it has not been surveyed and tested for an obstacle clearance. This particular approach is to a runway which is only 2,600 feet long. And so if you're flying a medium high performance airplane, you certainly want to have a stabilized glide angle down to that runway at as far out as you can. So let's look at how you might determine that point. So it is a purely geometric calculation. It's relatively simple. I won't go into how, how you do it, but you know, you just a little bit of simple trig and you got it. So if I look at the height above touchdown, which in this case is 562 feet, I can do the calculations. I can find that at 1.77 nautical miles from the, from the runway, I will intersect a three degree glide angle. To make things simple, and perhaps slightly more conservative, we typically use the number 300 rather than 318 and divide the height above touchdown by 300. In this case, we'd get 1.88 nautical miles, which is pretty close to 1.7. It's just in the noise. Another way to look at this, in this particular approach, I have weather minimums of 601. So if I just take the 600 and divide that by 300, I get two nautical miles. And that's certainly conservative, and it's oftentimes good enough. So if we're flying this approach and you're level at 680 feet, you would pass the three degree glide angle intercept at about two nautical miles from the runway. Observing the distance on your GPS, you would know that the glide angle then gets steeper and steeper as you proceed inside of 1.8 nautical miles. So if I'm at 
one nautical mile, which is the public's visual minimums over here, I could have a five or six degree glide angle, which except for certain low, slow, slow airplanes with great big flaps, that could be a really difficult thing to do. So it becomes critical for short runways and higher performance airplanes, and that's the main reason that it's used. So in conclusion, the VDP exists for all straight-in non-precision approaches, and as I said, it does not apply to circling or precision approaches. To find the VDP, take some height above the airport, height above touchdown, divide it by 300, and you get a pretty good number. And for some some airplanes, this could be a go-no-go factor. For instance, the published minimums on the approach we looked at a few minutes ago was one nautical mile of visibility. Well, if you're flying a higher-performance airplane and you really need a three-degree glide angle in order to be able to safely land that airplane on a short runway, then you may find that your real minimums are two-mile visibility because if you're not established on a three-degree glide angle by two miles from the runway, you're just not going to be able to make the landing. For some airplanes, this is a major go-no-go factor, something that should be considered. Now, in general, the VDB for most approaches is somewhere between a mile and a half and two miles. And so what I tell my students is when they get to about a mile and a half, if they don't see the runway, they're probably not going to be able to make a nice stabilized descent and certainly, they will not be able to make a three-degree glide angle. So they'll have to decide, you know, can they just throw out all the flaps and get the airplane on the ground safely? Or should they just execute the missed approach early? So thanks for watching. I hope that this was helpful and that it might answer a question on an oral. Who knows? This is not a bad area for an oral question.